Hi guys, I'm Molly Licea, and this is GRS University. Today, we are going to talk about push engraving and how to make the graver for that, otherwise known as the burin. Let's go. Okay, so we are going to talk to you a little bit about hand push engraving. Um, basically, to get you started into engraving, this is a really easy way, is by buying our Buren kit. This is the 022-620 Buren graver. It's a C-Max carbide tungsten graver. Comes with this little rubber tip on there. Keep it because your graver is going to be sharp. It's a good way to keep it from breaking when you're not using it. So with this, it's traditionally used in printmaking, which is kind of the perspective we're coming from. You're going to want to work in softer metals, but it's also not really going to have a reshaped grind. It's just going to have a really, really long heel. This is a 90 degree geometry, but there's lots of other geometries out there that you can use. Um, Sam Alfano has some posted on the Engravers Cafe page. I would suggest looking there and researching a little bit. Again, this is just to get you started. Your face is going to be ground at a 35 degree angle. Kind of think of that as you're not, um, you're not as steep, and so you're not gonna have as blunt of an object pushing against the metal. It's going to allow you to glide through the metal a little bit easier. So we have this already ground, ready to go. If you do have to resharpen, uh, you should just be able to hit the face because your heel is super long. So there's two set screws in the handle that we're gonna loosen. And then we're just gonna slip this in here with the face pointing up. Tighten those guys back down. And that's ready to go. Okay. So, again, you're gonna wanna use softer metals for this. Hand push engraving takes quite a bit of strength. Um, Another really, really important thing to note is that you wanna keep your hand down below your cutting surface. It's really easy to slip and you have so much pent up energy pushing this way that you don't wanna slip and go into your hand. So huge note right there, guys. Put your hand down below the cutting surface, okay? And I haven't done this in 10 years, so be ready for me to slip, okay? <laughs> All right. So we're just gonna sink the tip in here and slow and steady wins the race with push engraving. So you wanna make sure that you have a sharp point on this and you'll know if you don't have a sharp point on your graver because you're gonna slip a lot more, but then also you'll have a little burr start to kick up on the edges of your cut. A real quick way to test to see if your graver is sharp is if it sticks into your fingernail. If it glides across, you need to resharpen. And because this is traditionally used for printmaking, you don't necessarily want that mirror polish that you would use for other types of engraving. You would want a lower polish that's going to catch the ink in these cuts. I'm just kind of going a little bit and then readjusting, putting my pointer finger down to kind of help support that. And you really want to keep your elbow locked and turn into your cut.
This is just a quick and easy way for you to jumpstart into engraving with without the startup cost. But if you want more detail on hand push, there is a video out there by Jason Marchiavava and it's called The Art of Ornamental Jewelry Engraving and he'll go into much more detail. So right now I'm just doing slightly curved lines. They're still pretty straight. Um, my thumb is kind of resting along the edge of the graver, but then it's also resting on the plate. So it's a pretty low angle. And then my pointer finger is coming down across the top and kind of creating a support along that top edge. And that's just kind of helping me nudge along. So you can see that I'll push a little bit and then I move my finger along with it. But I'm using my other hand to turn into my cuts. It's probably also worth noting that um, this plate is mounted onto just a wood block and then clamped into my vise. You can also work on a flat surface. You just need to make sure that you really support your plate on the surface and then keep it out of the way. The vise just kind of helps create that stability and it helps you to get your hand down below the surface so you don't have to worry about any kind of injury. All right, so those are just slightly curved straight lines. Let's find another part to work on. Okay, so you can also do quick picks to create your shading. Because this metal is softer, it's a lot easier to flick that burr out. And right now I'm doing a big curve. I'm kind of pivoting around my pointer finger and turning into that cut. Come back the other way. And my elbow is really locked, guys. I'm not trying to push into this with my arm or my wrist. I'm just keeping this locked tight and using my other hand to control the direction of my cutting. All right, so if you do need to resurface the face of your graver, you're going to need some sort of a diamond abrasive to do that because this is a carbide tool. So I just have a small diamond stone here and I'm gonna hold my graver at roughly a 35 degree angle and we're just gonna go back and forth. You just wanna restore that sharp tip on your graver. So that's ready to go. You don't necessarily have to have sharpening fixture or anything like that to do this. Okay. So we're back to cut in. This is, um, going to be a bit more time consuming than if you were using an air system because you do have to kind of go slower, make sure that you're not rushing into your cuts. But you can create some really, really pretty work. Very detailed work. The one thing that you might not be able to do with hand push engraving that you can do with an air pneumatic system 
is you're not gonna be able to get those really deep cuts like you can with a heavier hitting. Um, if you're looking to create something more like that without buying the machine, you might look into Sam's hammer and chisel um, kit that could help you create those deeper cuts. But this is more for fine detailed work if if I have to say, if, how do I want to phrase that? <laughs> In my opinion, that's where I was going with that. <laughs> but it's a quick, friendly graver to use. And I didn't slip. I've only slipped once, so. Good beginner friendly graver, okay? But that's pretty much it, you guys. Just remember, hand out of the way. Slow and steady wins the race. And if you feel like you need to resharpen, just take it back on that face a little bit. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that clears up some questions in regards to hand push engraving and how you can get started on that. This week's suggested Instagram user is The Jewels by Lubeck. It is a father-daughter duo, Jay and Kindred, and Kindred is awesome. She really is. Go check out their page, she is hilarious. Her dad, Jay, is a master jeweler, so they've got all the knowledge to back them as well. You're gonna love their page. If you wanna be the suge next suggested Instagram user, then tag us at GRS Tools on your next post, or all of your posts, whatever you wanna do. It's fine with us. Oh, and don't forget to like us on all of our social media platforms, please. Thank you.